Okay, in this problem, you throw a ball vertically upward from the roof of a tall building. The ball leaves your hand at a point even with the roof railing with an upward speed of 15 meters per second. The ball is then in free fall. On its way back down, it just misses the railing, and we're asked to find a number of things. The first part is to figure out the ball's position and velocity one and four seconds after leaving your hand. So let's go ahead and think about what a, a good strategy for a problem like this would be. The first thing is we should draw a picture, and there is sort of one already here for us to use. Um, so you're up here at the top of this building, and there's the railing, and you've got the ball that you're going to throw up. It's going to go up and come back down, presumably. We don't know how tall the building is, but we know at least how fast it left your hand. So that's the picture that we have. We have some knowns. We have uh, the fact that there's 15 meters per second upward speed. And um, well, we know that the ball is in free fall. That's an approximation. That means that we're going to neglect air resistance and we're just worried about the effect of gravity. So what we're trying to do in this part is to figure out what uh, is known. Well, the, uh, we know with the 15 meters per second, what we're looking for uh, is the position, the velocity at some later times. And so we should go ahead and think about what concepts are here. Well, the concept here is kinematics or the mathematics of one dimensional motion in particular. So concept of 1D motion is what we have in mind. And there are some equations that go along with that. One of the equations that we'll use will be relevant to the position of the ball in the vertical direction. So it probably is worth at this point indicating what our coordinate system is. Let's put that in green here. Let's let the y direction go vertically. And so the equations for one dimensional motion would look something like this. The position y is equal to the initial y position, y naught, plus the initial y velocity times the time, plus a correction term, one half times the acceleration times time squared. There's another equation that tells you how the velocity changes in time. That's v is equal to v naught plus acceleration times time. Those are really the only two equations that we have. You can derive a third equation if needed, and sometimes that's useful. You can derive a third equation that doesn't depend on time, and that looks like this. v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in y, which I can write as y minus y naught, the final minus the initial, you might also see that written as delta y. So in this first part of the problem, part A, we should make a list of the things that are known and the things that we want. Let's do that over here. We are told the initial speed is 15 meters per second going up. That means that v naught is equal to 15 meters per second. Notice that this is a positive number indicating that the velocity is originally on its way up. I can draw a little arrow, the initial velocity going up like that. We want to figure out what are the final position and final velocity at a later time. So we're going to want to know what is y and what is v at some later time. We don't know what the initial position is unless we decide to indicate that where the ball starts that position y naught, we can just decide to choose that to be equal to zero. It's like putting the zero of our ruler right there. So let's make that choice. And lastly, we'll need to indicate what the acceleration is. So because we're in free fall, that's where this value comes in, minus g, where g is the gravitational acceleration on whatever planet you are working on. And for a problem like this, we assume that we're on Earth, so this is minus 9.80 meters per second squared. Okay? These, uh, these variable choices are going to be consistent throughout this entire problem. At this point, there's not much to do other than to simply plug and chug, so let's go ahead and do that. We can use this equation to figure out what happens at t is equal to 1.0 seconds. We can figure out what is happening with the position and with the velocity. The position equation 
let's start plugging in our numbers. We start off at an initial position of zero, initial velocity of 15 meters per second, and a time of one second. I'm being very careful to put in all the units here because that'll help me to identify if I make a mistake. Plus one half, the acceleration is minus 9.80 meters per second squared. And lastly, what I've run out of room for is 1.0 seconds quantity squared. Let's just make sure that all the units work out right. We get a 15 meters per second times seconds, and that means that we have 15 meters. Let's just check this. The seconds cancel. And the remaining term is going to be minus 4.90 meters divided by seconds squared times seconds squared. So that works out. And what, what you can see is that we get this number 10.1 when we're done rounding to the appropriate number of sig figs. That's the position at one second. Likewise for the speed, or the velocity rather, we can work that out quickly. The speed would be 15 meters per second plus the acceleration of minus 9.0, 9.80 meters per second squared times the time one zero uh, seconds. And what do we get? We get that this is 5.2. meters per second. Follow the same procedure and uh, do that for t is equal to four seconds. Same idea except in this location and in this location you'll put in four seconds instead and you'd find that the y position comes out to be minus 18.4 meters and the velocity comes out to be minus 24.2 meters per second. The fact that both of these are negative, does that make sense? And so let's just do a sanity check on that. The minus sign indicates that the position of the ball is below zero, and so that would be somewhere down here, and the velocity being negative means that it's moving downward. And of course, that's what you expect when a projectile or a ball gets thrown upwards, it'll be moving upwards, and then later on, it'll be moving downwards. So that passes the sanity check. What is the velocity when the ball is five meters above the railing? So here we have our knowns from before, but we want to know what happens when the velocity is, rather, we're trying to figure out what the velocity is when the y position is five meters. We don't know what the velocity is. We actually don't know what the time is either, but we don't care. What we're really looking for is to figure out the velocity. So we're looking for an equation that will tell us what the velocity is if we don't know the time and we don't need the time. There's one equation that'll tell us that, and that was this third kinematic equation. And it looks like this. V squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2A and the change in Y. We are looking to figure out what is the ball's velocity, which will be on the left-hand side, so we can start to plug in the numbers that we have, 15 meters per second squared, plus two, minus 9.80 meters per second squared, and then the change in y, which is five meters minus zero. What you get when you multiply everything together, you'll find 127, and the units are meters squared per second squared, which they should be since this is equal to v squared. The last thing to do is solve for v, and this is where you have to be careful. When you take the square root of both sides, you have to remember that technically the answer could be plus or minus the square root of that number, 127 meters squared per second squared. That plus or minus is important physically, 
because there are actually two possible answers to this problem. The number you get, 11.3, and the meters squared over second squared, square rooted becomes meters per second. This is correct. It should be plus or minus because when the ball is five meters above the railing, it could be on its way up, which would be the positive solution, or it could be on its way down, which is the negative solution. Part C, find uh, the maximum height reached. Maximum height, keeping in mind that we still have our initial velocity, we still have our initial height, we'd like to know what our final height is when it's at its maximum. The important thing about this is to remember what happens when an object is in motion. If it's thrown up, eventually it will come down. So what happens when it's at its very highest point, when it's on its way up and coming down? Up here is when it momentarily comes to rest, or at least the vertical velocity is equal to zero. So that is what you need to realize in order to complete the problem, you have to set the velocity equal to zero, because physically that's what happens. Once again, we're going to use the equation that does not involve time. You don't have to. You could solve for the time, but then you're going to have to plug that into a different equation to figure out the height. So I would suggest we jump to this equation because it doesn't involve time. What we know is that this is uh, the left hand side is zero. But before we do that, let's just do a little bit of algebra. It's a good idea to do as much algebra as you can before you start plugging in numbers, because what we know is that we're looking for this quantity here. And in general, if you're doing physics, doing the algebra up front may show you that some numbers just don't even matter. They may cancel algebraically. So let's go ahead and subtract v naught from both sides. So this is v squared minus v naught squared equal to 2a y minus y naught. I'll divide both sides of that equation by 2a, which cancels, leaving me y minus y naught on the, on the right. And finally, we can solve for what we want, v squared minus v naught squared all over 2a plus y naught. That gives us y. When you plug in the numbers, we've got 0, we've got minus 15 meters per second. That quantity is squared divided by 2 and divided by g, negative g, which is that negative quantity. To that, we're going to have to add y naught, which is 0. And as you would find, this would give you a positive value, 11.5 meters. That would be your y value. That would be, therefore, the maximum height. So parts D and E, we'll talk about them together. Part D, where is the, what is the ball's acceleration when it's at its maximum height, which is to say when it's at the top of its motion? At that point, what we just described was that the velocity will be zero. But you have to keep in mind that whenever you have free fall, which we certainly do in this situation, free fall means that the acceleration is constant, constantly downward with a magnitude of g. That's the magnitude. Um, so downward with a value of 9.80 meters per second squared. Let's talk about part E then, and this will help to justify this solution. In part E, we sketch a graph of the velocity as a function of time, time in seconds and velocity in meters per second. We start off with the value of the velocity being 15 meters per second. It's positive because it's on its way up. And let's let this be half of a second. This is one, this is one and a half seconds, and this is two seconds. Well, this velocity graph starts off at 15, and because it's feeling a constant negative acceleration, that is to say the velocity is changing linearly, this comes down following a straight line. And the slope of this graph is equal to minus 9.8 meters per second per second. In other words, minus 9.8 
meters per second squared. That's true even right here, 